Okay, I would like to ask everyone in the audience, if you're over 47, could you please put your hand up? The chances are, in a world without antibiotics, you're probably already dead. So the life expectancy in the UK before antibiotics were dis was discovered was 47. And for all the young, fresh members of the audience who didn't have your hand up, tick, tock, tick, tock. 47 is not that far away, is it? I'm sure it's not the ripe old age that you were hoping for. Now, I'm sure most people are familiar with the story of how antibiotics were discovered. Alexander Fleming accidentally left his bacterial dishes on the windowsill over the weekend. And when he came back, they'd grown mold. But he noticed that the bacterial colonies closest to the mold had died. And being a very good scientist, he decided to investigate this further. And he discovered that it wasn't really the mold itself that was killing the bacteria. It was some kind of juice that it produced. And this mold juice he named penicillin. Now, well, penicillin was discovered in the 1920s, but it took till the Second World War for its true potential to become apparent. It's estimated that during the Second World War, 300,000 soldiers were saved by penicillin. And since this time, millions and millions and millions of lives around the world have been saved by antibiotics. And it is this ability to prevent infection and treat disease that has allowed the phenomenal development of modern medicine as we know it. But antibiotics are at risk. We are losing them. Bacteria that are resistant to nearly all known antibiotics have emerged around the world. We see bacteria that are resistant to multiple antibiotics and truly untreatable infections have started to emerge. The World Health Organization has stated that if the world doesn't take action immediately, by 2050, 10 million people per year will die from drug-resistant infections. That's more than cancer. That's more than HIV, malaria, and measles combined. But how many of us have actually thought about what this really means? How many of us have thought about what this post-antibiotic era will really look like? Antibiotics allow many, many chemotherapies to take place. Antibiotics allow complex surgery. So, without antibiotics, most of our cancer therapies will not be possible. Transplant surgeries, hip and knee replacements, heart surgery, these are all going to stop. So, is that it? Are we all doomed? So far, this isn't really a very uplifting talk, is it? Um, well, we do need to take action. We need to do something urgently. And our best solution is vaccination. Vaccines allow us to prevent infection. But more than this, vaccines reduce the amount of antibiotics that we need to use and therefore, we can reduce the development of resistance. Also, antibiotics don't just protect the people who've been vaccinated. We know that if we give a pneumococcal vaccine to small children, there's a reduction in pneumonia in the elderly. Now, if you think about it, this makes complete sense. Anyone who has had a child knows that when they go to nursery or school, they bring home absolutely everything. Children are little germ carriers, and they come home and they snuggle their grandparents and they share all their germs. So if we vaccinate children, we prevent that sharing from occurring. The apex predators of the bacterial world, the ones we are most at risk from, are highly, highly resistant. 
these bacteria prey on the susceptible, the vulnerable, and the elderly. But imagine if we could vaccinate against these infections. Imagine if we could vaccinate anyone who's on a hospital waiting list. Imagine if we could vaccinate anyone who has an underlying condition that makes them more susceptible. When we talk about increased susceptibility to infection, it is not simply people who are highly immunocompromised we're talking about. It is people who have kidney disease, people with rheumatoid arthritis, people who have underlying lung conditions, people who are diabetic, the obese, the very old, and the very young. A huge amount of the global population fit into these categories. But imagine if we could protect all these people. Well, we are working on it. This is what my laboratory is working on, vaccines that will prevent these infections. Now, this all sounds wonderful, doesn't it? But there are challenges. It, it is not an easy thing to do. Creating vaccines that prevent bacterial infections is difficult. Viral infections don't carry their own machinery for infection with them. They hijack our cells and they use our machinery, which means there are very few targets in which to investigate as potential vaccines. So for example, HIV has 15 potential targets, COVID has 29. One of the bacteria that I work on, Pseudomonas, has over 3,000 potential targets. And this makes identifying the right one really difficult. Another difficulty is the increasing levels of vaccine hesitancy and mistrust of science. During the 1980s, there was the scandal of the doctor who falsely reported that there was a link between the MMR vaccine and autism. Now, despite the fact that it's been widely shown that there is no association, vaccine rates have dropped, and we have seen outbreaks of mumps and measles in both young children and teenagers. During COVID, we collectively, globally, went through a traumatic experience. This was a unique time with uncertainty, social media, and misinformation. And this time has also increased vaccine hesitancy. So what can we do about that? Well, I think it's very important that scientists learn to communicate more and to communicate in ways that the public better understand. And I hope that is what I'm doing today. I think we can all agree that a world without antibiotics and a life expectancy of 47 is not something we want to return to. And vaccines really are our best hope of maintaining modern medicine. World labs around the world are working on this. There are more and more antibacterial vaccines coming through to clinical trial. We are going to succeed. We are going to get there. But I would like to ask all of you to play your part too. I urge you to spread the word about the seriousness of antibiotic resistance. And I ask you to challenge misinformation about the importance of vaccines and the role that they can play in maintaining healthcare and allowing us to live beyond 47. Thank you.